no, it's not 4.30. According to my Atlanta computer here, it's 4.30. But all right, um, let's, let's dive in. So um, I can't really see how many people are in here. But anyway, I'm going to assume there's lots of people in here, and that's awesome. So thank you for coming in. Um, and I was just going to dive in. So all right, um, topics. Uh, I'm going to explain why this topic and... Um, it, it'll make sense in a little bit. Um, but why people hack, I'm going to try to cover that uh, to, to a certain extent. Um, and then I'm going to talk about some tools I use, like Cloudflare, firewalls, and then things you can do with WordPress to secure your site. A uh, little about me. Uh, father of four, been married for 24-ish years, um, and have four kids uh, from age 9 to 19, um, been in Atlanta um, almost my whole life. I lived in Grand Rapids for a little while and Birmingham for about a year. Um, so it's changed since 97, 98, so um, real interesting. Um, I run uh, an agency called Clockwork. Uh, I used to run an agency called Sideways 8, uh, sold that and started this one. Um, been running Clockwork for about three years, um, and then I am an organizer for WordCamp uh, Atlanta. Um, I got Mike is in here too. He's an, another one of the organizers. But we do have uh, WordCamp Atlanta, hopefully going to be in October. Uh, we pushed it back a little bit. We were shooting for spring, but it just wasn't going to work out. But anyway, so that's that's coming. Keep your eyes open for that. There is going to be a venue. So, and no, I just um, it's probably it's probably going to be at KSU. Um, the, or so Southern Polytech, what used to be Southern Polytech. So um, in self-promotion, I have this talk on YouTube. So if you guys want to just leave, go watch it, you know, and at home, you can. But um, anyway, check it out. Um, I've got that and some other videos uh, on there too. Um, and like the talk I'm doing tomorrow, I actually have that one on, on YouTube also. Um, all right, disclaimer. I am a self-taught networking web guy like probably many of you are. Um, I'm sure that there's better ways to do this, and I'm probably not doing it like the best way, but I'm doing something that tends to work. Uh, so I'll just put that out there. Um, I do use a lot of these tips on, I, I host, a, I don't know, about 250 or 300 sites on um, some on w, uh, WP Engine, and, but most, I've got about 30 servers on DigitalOcean. Um, and so security is kind of important. If you're on something like w, WP Engine, they do the security for you and things like that. If you have your own servers, that's a totally different story, and you're, you're on your own. Um, so there, there's a lot of things you need to, if you, if you do something like that, it's, it's important to have some kind of plan. If you just set up a server, and never do anything to secure it, you're, you're probably going to have a problem pretty soon. Um, um, why this topic? Um, I, was, I was looking for how do other people do this, because um, I was kind of curious. And on YouTube, there are a ton of videos on, oh, you just go download WordFence, install it, boom, and your, your site's secure. And to me, that's the last step that you should do. Um, there's a lot of pieces that you can do up front, you know, before you start even dealing with WordPress. Um, and that's what I'm going to start off with here. Um, so uh, why do people hack? They kind of don't. A lot of people will, will ask, um, we use, um, what's it called, uh, Limit Login Attempt Reloaded, um, which is a good plugin that keeps track of how many people are logging in, and if they uh, mess up three times, it'll log it for like 60 minutes or so, and they, they can't log in for 60 minutes, and it slows down a hacker. Um, it, there's not someone sitting there, chances are, there's not someone sitting there typing admin, admin123, enter, dang it, you know, and doing it over and over again. They write scripts. They write a script that grabs a list of a 1,000 uh, users, and then a list of a thousand passwords, you know, and they, they'll just automate it and just start hammering your server. Um, so it's not, 
rarely is it a personal vendetta against that website. I mean, I'm sure that that does happen, but the majority of it, it's just people poking holes like, did they secure this? Did they secure that? And they just run through, you know, their their script. Um, so why do they do it? Why, why not? I mean, um, I remember when I was a kid, my brother and I sneaked out of the house and rolled a house. Um, thought it was awesome. We had fun. You know, really annoying for the owner of the house, but you know, we had fun. And that's kind of like I kind of equate hacking, you know, to that. It's just something that people like to do, um, and you can claim. I took this site down. Um, really obnoxious, but that's that's how it is. And then there is some that's a little more, a little a little more dangerous, you know, where they're actually trying to get data and sell, you know, credit card information and stuff like that. But I mean, the majority of it are just these little bots that are running and hitting hitting your site over and over and over again. Um, I have to start off and say. The first thing and the most important thing for you to do uh, if you're going to secure your site is make sure you have a good backup. Um, I once had thought I had b daily backups running, and then I realized that none of the, z the zip files were, they were all uh, uh, corrupted. Um, and so my backups were useless to me. Um, so make sure you have a good backup. Uh, Manage WP um, has a basically for zero dollars. Uh, you can get one backup a month, which if that's not enough, you know, really, but I mean, if all you have is that one backup and it costs you nothing to have that, that's a good thing to do. Um, but if you want to do daily backups, it's real cheap on uh, Managed WP. It's $1.40, um, give or take. Um, so to me, that's really cheap if you spent so much time in it. So make sure you have have a good backup. And if you don't want to use that, there's a plugin called Duplicator that I use that can give you a backup real quick. Probably it'll take less than five minutes. So that's important. And then most importantly, make sure that that zip uncompresses and you can take that site and get it up and running locally with, with your backup. So that's kind of like disclaimer there. Just That's the most important thing. All right. Um, Cloudflare, how many of you guys, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see, but how many of you guys use Cloudflare for DNS? Raise your hand if you use something else for DNS. Couple? All right. Um, I'm going to just walk you guys through some, some simple stuff that I do when I, when I set up a Cloudflare uh, or a site on Cloudflare. Um, there's some bot blocking tools that are really cool. There's some rules that can where you can block uh, a specific country if you want to. You can also block your login um, path basically based on your country. So if you're always in the United States and no one ever needs to get into the admin you know side, you might as well set it up where no one outside of the U.S. can get in. So I'm going to just show you guys uh, how to do that and. Um, I don't know if it means anything, but I mean, lots of people are using it now. WP Engine using it, Convesio, uh, Kinsta, I think, is using it. It's becoming more and more common. And um, I promote it mainly because it doesn't cost you anything um, to have to use Cloudflare's DNS. So let's dive in here. So I'm logged in here uh, on uh, imlo.co, um, which is for sale. Um, but I, ju I just needed to have some kind of domain here. So, but basically, um, when you set up a, a site on Cloudflare, uh, you always want to make sure you have the proxy on here. And this is not the right IP address for that site. Uh, so, if you're trying to go to it right now, it's not going to work for you. Um, but um, you know, make sure that you are proxying. If you turn this off, you hit edit whoop, over here. Hit edit and turn that off. You're no longer using cloud. You are using Cloudflare for DNS, but you're not using it to secure anything because it's just bypassing all of the the filters and all that stuff that they have. So make sure you have the proxy on. Um, and then, if you were trying to block, um, let's say, let's lock in. Let's say we're getting a lot of traffic from. Uh, give me a country. Turkey. Turkey. Thank you. Um, get a lot of traffic from there. Um, so um, you, we would look at it, you'd go to analytics and you'd go over here to security and see, oh look, we're getting traffic from, let's just pretend Turkey here. Um, obviously, 
United States is only, I'm probably the only person that's ever gone to the site. Um, but if we, if we were getting a lot of traffic there, we would want to stop that. And firewall, um, the firewall tools here are pretty impressive. So let's go to security. We go over here to the WAF, which stands for Web Application Firewall. And we set up a rule. And why can't I hit add? Oh, there it is. I'm blind. All right. So I'm going to call this um, secure. I doesn't really matter if I spell it correctly. Uh, let's say WP login. So this would only apply if only admins are going to get to this site. Um, if you have if you have a um, comments, you know, where people are making comments all the time, they need to log in. Don't block all everyone, but the majority of the sites that I build are marketing sites where we don't have a we don't have a blog where there's a lot of comments and so I normally will set up this rule so I'll do this rule I'll do if the country does not equal United I'll get to Turkey in just a minute uh, United States if the country does not do that and the path URL path contains wp-login.php and then I can do I can do a couple things here um, the the more dangerous thing to do here is to block it that way nobody can get uh, it'll block them completely um, but you could also use a JS challenge where it'll pop up and say are you a human um, so normally when I'm setting up rules I'll test them uh, first using the JavaScript thing, and if it's doing what I think it should do, I'll, I'll go back and block it if that's the appropriate action. Uh, in this case, I'm going to block it because nobody should be logging in to my website because I, I don't have a blog where they can comment. So do that. OK, and then you'll have this little blue dot here that will be there for probably 10 seconds or less, um, and then it basically it's applying the rule there. Once the dot disappears, your rule's there. Um, another great rule, blocking a country. If you're getting tons, uh, block these countries. I was getting a ton of uh, traffic from uh, Singapore, and there was this thing called um, uh, Pedalbot, um, which was just hammering my server was up to 100% CPU usage. Um, and I was able, I, I wound up, I started off first trying to block the, the bot, but then I just wound up blocking the whole country because it, it was a mess. But I'll show you how to do both. So uh, real simple, country, if the country equals uh, Turkey, then you just block it. Uh, or do a JS challenge, uh, whatever whatever you want to do. But this is absolutely free. So if you're not using it, highly recommend it. And then let me show you the um, blocking based on um, like if it's a bot. So you guys, uh, web browsers have uh, what are they called? There's strings where um, your agent. Um, so every browser has an agent, and so when you uh, look at your logs, you'll see it was a Chrome you know, this version, WebKit, blah, blah, blah. Um, bots will also have a string, um, so most of them will, um, will have a string saying what it is. And so if I were getting tons of traffic from uh, Pet Petalbot, which I was, um, you just go over here and say block these bots assuming I'm going to find more. Because once you start looking at your logs, you'll find, you'll start seeing things and you're like, that looks not good. That looks not good. And you just start um, start blocking them. But you just look for um, user agent, not equals, because there'll be versions um, of, of bots. But you want to do, if it contains pedal bot, you can either give it a, the JS challenge, which is the safer one, or block them. Um, to me, it's worth a ton um, because if you're on a hosted somewhere 
and your site's really slow and you're getting hammered and you don't have you don't have a tool to to block um, this type of stuff at least not that I'm I'm aware of um, and Cloudflare just to me does an incredible job I'll see I'll see the CPU on the server just plummet once I start applying these rules it's kind of it's a kind of addictive um, if you're geeky like me um, you know and I on one of the sites I was uh, I was getting um, we I'm trying to think how many hits we were getting but it was it said something it was over a million uh, hits and and just watching that every time I applied a new rule it just drop down a little more, a little more, a little more. It was, it was kind of cool. So anyway, Cloudflare is awesome. Start there. Uh, if you're not on it, um, highly recommend it. All right. Um, an actual firewall is also important. Um, I know if you have shared hosting, if you're on WP Engine, if you're on something, um, you know, that does the server, maintains the server for you, shouldn't have to worry about it. In theory, they would have uh, things blocked. Um, I have my things on DigitalOcean. I spin up servers there using SpinUp, um, SpinUp WP. Um, and Cloudflare gives us a couple, uh, not Cloudflare, DigitalOcean gives me a firewall. And I, I just set up a rule that says block everything except for which two ports? Somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The web traffic, because uh, I don't I don't host mail on my server, so I don't have to keep port what what I don't even know what they are now. Uh, Twenty five, one ten, uh, what? Lots of there's lots of mail ports. All of those can be blocked if you have your own uh, server. Uh, obviously, if you're hosted at Bluehost or or something like that, they they're going to have mail on that server, and you don't have the rules to do that. But if you are hosting on something like, does Cloudways, um, does Cloudways give you a firewall? Does anybody know? Any Cloudways people here? We'll never know. So, all right. Anyway, um, I think something like Cloud Cloudways, they're going to. Um, I don't think they give you a firewall. They may or may not, but it's important to, to just block the ones you don't need. So to me, Cloudflare is first, then your firewall, and then we get into lots of things that I'm going to kind of rapid fire um, hit you with here. Um, so first, always get an SSL certificate. They're cheap or free at this point um, with Let's Encrypt. Um, so, and they're a lot easier to install now. I mean, normally it, it used to be kind of tedious to get an SSL certificate, but a lot of services now, it, it, you just you can either pay for it or um, there's a plugin that does um, that's like that that, that does SSL uh, and it'll talk to Let's Encrypt and install the SSL certificate. Um, totally free, so you know, I recommend that. Um, secondly, PHP. How many of you guys look at this regularly? Got some geeks over here. So um, yeah, if, if you guys aren't watching this and keeping um, keep up with keeping up with this, this is going to be a problem. I talked to an agency owner um, this week, actually, and I said, "What are your plans to move to version eight? And he said, "I have no plans." And I'm like, "Oh, oh, okay. Um, let's talk about that." Um, PHP is, I mean, I wouldn't say it's moving fast or anything, but there are, um, there's always new versions, and we're already at the point where version 8 is in kind of maintenance mode. They're not adding features or anything to it. It's just a, uh, it's getting security patches, um, basically. So, I mean, version 8 is old. So, if you're on... Um, or it's getting old. It's still it's still what is. Um, I wouldn't recommend going to eight one yet. Um, I don't think plugins are fully compatible with with uh, eight one yet. But I mean, you should be targeting eight at this point. That is going to be a, a major security problem if you guys. And I'm I'm guilty. I've got plenty of sites where I've got to get I've got to fix the theme. You know, because they bought a theme on Theme Forest. The person doesn't maintain it, and I've got to figure out how to do that. It's either move the site, you know, to a different theme or or something like that. But that's really important that you guys um, keep PHP up to date. Um, 
I don't really use security plugins um, in, in the aspect of, uh, like I don't have word fence on my servers. If I do see uh, activity I don't like, uh, or it looks like I'm getting hacked uh, based on what I see on Cloudflare and the logs, I might install word fence. Um, but if you're on shared hosting, I, I, I think it's almost a no-brainer throw word fence on there, or there's iThemes, which I've never used. I know a lot of people like the iThemes security plugin. Um, word fence to me um, do, does a good job, but it does, maybe I'm crazy, which I've been called that before, but word fence tends to suck up a little CPU usage a little more than, um, than not having it. Um, so I could I could be wrong, but I saw about like a 10 to 15% slowdown on, on processing. I can't prove that that's a, a true statement, uh, but that's what it felt like. So I so I I'm I don't install WordFence unless I get a lot of a lot of activity. But one thing I do like about WordFence is they they took one part of WordFence and wrapped it around uh, into one plugin, and it's the the two factor authentication. Uh, plugin. Um, that is, if you guys aren't using a two-factor authentication, um, you really should. Um, it's I know it's a pain in the butt, and I'm getting to the point where I have, um, what's it called? Um, Authenticator or whatever, where I have like this massive list that I have to scroll through to find the six-digit code, um, and it's only going to get worse and worse as time progresses. Um, but Two-factor authentication is super important and, again, free. It doesn't cost you anything to install that plugin, um, and it will stop a hacker. If they get the username and password, they also will need that code. So good plugin. Um, I also use uh, limit login attempts reloaded. Um, I don't know what happened to the original limit login uh, attempts, but the reloaded one's the newer version. Um, and there are a couple things that I do in there. Um, by default, it sets something that is, um, I think you get three tries and then you get like 20 minutes. Uh, then you get locked out for 20 minutes. I go in there and I set it for like a day, like because chances are if it's someone trying to get into my site, um, they're a client of mine. They have my phone number. They have my email, things like that. They, you know, if they failed three times, it's probably not them trying to get in. And I'm a phone call away, um, or they can, you know, send a support ticket. You know, and we'll I'll go in and you know let let them out. But I set it to to something a little more extreme. And if they do that, um, they come back 24 hours later or two days later. I'll um, and they try it again. I'll set it where it's. 40 days or something, you know, something obscene like that. Um, but it's really cool because it, it'll log the IP address. So if you're always getting hit from the same IP address, you could do something at the Cloudflare, Cloudflare level to block that IP address or that subnet or, or what, whatever. Um, I probably don't need to even talk about keeping your plugins up to date to this, this group of people. Um, if you're here, you probably know the importance of that. But I have not seen, I'm trying to think. Um, I think I've only had, I don't want to say it because I'm going to get jinxed. Anyway, I haven't had many attempts um, to, to hack, um, but I did get one get hacked on, on my servers, and it was just through a plugin update. Um, there's, there's services out there that will run them. I mean, WP Engine does it, uh, GoWP does it, or you can hit the auto, you know, enable auto update, which scares me a little bit um, if, it's, if it's a plugin that I'm not that familiar with, but if it's something like Gravity Forms, because normally when something gets hacked, they will, um, will where's my water? Sorry getting very thirsty. Um, all right, sorry about that. What was I talking about? Uh, plugins, keeping them up to date. Um, gravity forms. Yeah, thank you. So um, a lot of times when people get uh, hacked, they get hacked by uh, submissions of data. Um, so keep. I always keep gravity forms up to date. And plugins that I'm 
real familiar with that I've, I mean, I've been using Gravity Forms for 12 years uh, or so, and it's never broken anything. So I have no problem telling that one to auto update. Um, and that's true with, you know, Yoast or, you know, something like that. Um, it, some of the obscure ones, I, I won't do auto, auto update on them. Uh, I'll do those manually, but it's a good thing to do. Um, another thing that I see a lot of unwanted traffic uh, is things trying to hit XML RPC. Um, how many of you guys use XML RPC? I have yet to see anybody ever use XML. Oh, wait, one person? Oh, I want to talk to you later. That, what do you use it for? Uh, well, anyway. <laughs> Um, I always, re okay, so, so there's, there's a couple different things. Um, what, what do you use it for? Is it, uh, do you log in through the mobile phone? Okay. Okay. And it, yeah, I mean that good use for it. Don't delete it off of the site. Like I'm about to tell you, but, um, that's funny. I, I've never seen anybody actually use XML RPC and, I'll look at uh, Apache logs or Nginx logs, web server logs, um, and it'll, I'll see they're just trying to hit XML RPC and probably they're trying to authenticate and that's a way for them to hit and submit um, username and password in rapid succession. Um, and so I'll either, there's a plugin called Disable XML RPC, which I don't like to just add plugins when I can just remove the file. Um, and when you update WordPress, it won't install the XML RPC. But that's a file that's in the root, and you shouldn't have that file on there unless you're that guy. Um, <laughs> so it it's not it's it's just not used that often. So you know, be careful though bef before you delete it. Make sure you understand what what you're doing there. But I um, maybe start with the disable XML RPC plugin, um, and then. If you don't get any complaints uh, from anybody, you know, then you can remove the XML RPC file. Um, next, how many of you guys audit your users on a regular basis? Micah does, of course. Of course, Micah does. He probably has a script to do it, and it's no, <laughs> um, no. Uh, audit your users because a lot of times websites in I inherit websites all the time. A, a client says, my web guy left and, you know, can you help? And I'll look at it and I'll say, why do you have 25 admins? Um, you know, and walk them through keeping that clean. And there's nothing wrong with editing a user and changing them from administrator to a subscriber. All they're going to do is lose the privileges and they'll reach out to you and say, hey, I can't edit anything. And you'll realize, okay, well that user is still in, in use, I'll switch him back to admin. So always audit your users because, um, and also, I, I don't know if I would say recommend um, forcing people to change passwords, but if you've had a, a breach and you know your site was hacked, you always wanna reset all of the passwords. So that's, that's an important thing to do. Um, audit your plugins and themes. Um, I, I'll say it. Um, I don't like Theme Forest. I don't like anything that you you buy there because it. And I and I apologize if I have those developers in here, you know. Um, but um, it tends to be most of the plugins um, just aren't updated and they're not maintained. Um, maybe you get a good run for a couple of years, but they 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 kind of disappear. Make sure that you're keeping them up to date and that they're. They're good, good plugins. Um, avoid dumb plugins. Um, I don't know why I have that in there, but you should you should know um, which plugins to use and not to use. I did this originally for for my YouTube channel, and I don't. I was kind of doing it more for people that aren't going to be going to a WordCamp, um, you know. But anyway, just try to use plugins. You know, if there's only 10 active installs, chances are there's probably a plugin that does the exact same thing, but it has a lot more users. So there's some, just just be smart. <laughs> um, and then 
This one doesn't really matter. Uh, disable comments if possible. Um, uh, uh, a kismet is is cool. Like the fact that you can pay for a kismet um, and it'll keep the comments clean. Think about it though. Do you really need comments if if you're just doing a marketing site? I mean, and that's just I run an agency and we build websites for mark you know for site um, for clients and none of them ever want people to have comments on on the site and so i can i can disable that there's a great plugin called disable i think it's just called disable comments and it will um you can tell it to um disable it on post pages but it'll also do on via xml rpc and rest api so you can stop them because I'll have disa I'll have comments disabled completely on the site, and somehow some bot submits uh, data. Um, that to me uh, screams disable comments plugin needs to be installed on that one. Um, and then lastly, um, use uh, I I like to use Managed WP or some kind of service like that for for my backups uh, and for um, Notification. So if a site goes down, um, I, I set it up where I get notifications when sites are down. So those that's not really a security thing. It's just comes in comes in handy. And I flew through that stuff. I'm always worried when I do this if I'm going to have enough time. Uh, like this was a 45 minute talk on YouTube, and and now I just uh, uh, flew through that. Uh, so we'll have lots of time for Q and A. Um, but Lastly, um, this, it's a never-ending battle. Um, so make sure that if you set something up in Cloudflare, go back you know, later and make sure that you still need to block these people or look at your logs and make sure that there, is, um, you, there might be new traffic that you're not aware of, so it's important. Um, and then that's it. So I flew through it, but do we have a, I think William, you've got, Awesome. Any questions? Cool. Does anybody have any questions? And does anybody completely disagree with me? Because that'll be a f no. Just kidding. Um. <laughs> Can't help myself. How about the Clean Talk plugin? I use that on every site. Oh, use clean. Oh, for uh, clean talk. for comments. Spam, spam comments. Just blocking random. Is it free? Uh, I think there might be a certain number of sites free, and then it's paid. But it. Okay. I know uh, Melanie uses it too. Clean Talk. It, it's pretty effective. Okay, clean Just talk. Option. Okay, cool. All right, next. I just wanted to double check. When you're talking about using Cloudflare for DNS, would that be a complete replacement for hosting DNS records on something like Namecheap? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, yep. Thanks. And, and honestly, migrating from um, wherever, Namecheap, like Namecheap to Cloudflare, um, it sounds like a daunting task, um, but hopefully if they, if they can, uh, if you can export your records, uh, which I know GoDaddy can and probably most of them can, you can export them and uh, you can upload it directly into Cloudflare. So you should be able to get a carbon copy. Man, I'm old if I actually use that in a... Um, <laughs> do you guys know what a carbon copy is? You'll, you'll get a, an exact copy of, um, of, the, of the record. So, so it's not, it sounds daunting, you know, moving DNSs, but it's a five minute, you know, uh, thing. So, and, and if you can't do that, um, Cloudflare will also try to um, detect the records too. And it does a decent job. It doesn't grab every record. So if, if you go down that path and you can't, um, you can't upload the file, you let Cloudflare do that and then just compare, you know, with two screens and just make sure you they all match up perfectly. So. Um, if you use WP engine, how, yeah, how, much yeah, of, like... <laughs> how much of the stuff is done for you if you're using WP engine already? So, um, a lot. Um, so, like firewalls and stuff, uh, WP Engine is going to cover it. Uh, they're also going to block ports. They they use Cloudflare. If they have a, um, they've 
I haven't pushed all of my clients over to it yet, but they have, I forget what they, what they call it, but it's some kind of um, advanced network and it basically, they should just call it Cloudflare. Um, basically, they're, um, they did that probably in the past year or so. They switched over to Cloudflare. And so they do a lot of that stuff. That I like the, um, I like having access to block, block that stuff. So I'm, I mean, I, I like, I like DigitalOcean and stuff like that. WP Engine does a good job, um, and you're you're probably safe, you know, on on that stuff because if you've done the advanced stuff, because they're gonna they're gonna block stuff uh, because Cloudflare they're using Cloudflare to do it. So, man, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, Go ahead. I have a comment and a question. Um, first yeah. of all, uh, I completely agree. Managed WP is amazing. We actually use a lot, utilize it. We have so many different websites that we do that it's so nice to use the managed WP worker to actually just be able to log into managed WP and yeah. access all the websites there. And that's what I do to use a lot to go in and update my plugins on a weekly basis. So I'll just go through on their overview page and just update the plugins, which is amazing. But um, the second, the question I had, it was this, um, sometimes we'll find where we've done a website and we just forgot to mark disable comments um, when we first started the website so then we start seeing all these spam comments coming in on these really old photos yeah um does anyone know do you or anyone know of like a plugin does the disable comments plugin work to where we can actually retroactively go back and say hey disable all the plugin disable all the comments on the old photos or whatnot um i mean disable disable plugins will completely delete all the com comments and and get get rid of it um, I'm not sure about um, if you're trying are you're just try just trying to re just trying to retroactively like instead of having to go through eat go to the media library and go to each individual photo and say disable comments if there's a plug-in that will allow us to actually go back and retroactively do that if we just forgot to disable. From I'm the not show. sure. I mean, I would probably use a Kismet for that. Okay. Um, get get a license for that, and then just push the button and let it process all of them. I mean, it's going it's going to find which ones are comp, which one are flagged as uh, spam and which ones aren't. Um, and a Kismet's, I mean, great service. It's and it's pretty cheap. I just. I just don't, I don't need it. But a Kismet, I think, is probably the, the tool I would use to, to do that. I was just going to comment to that, that when we've had to do that, it just gives you the option to reassign comments past ones. So if, like, you need a blanket option, you don't have to go through each post. It gives you the option to just move them over, essentially. Okay. So I don't know if that made sense. Keep them coming, keep them coming. I get you some good exercise here. <laughs> I want to keep myself slim and tender for Aida. Hi. Um, I'm an absolute infant and a baby when it comes to doing anything developer or back-end WordPress. I'm sorry that I talked that <laughs> or spoke because <laughs> it was probably a lot of information. So, but. I'm a, a graphic designer who has found herself in a position where I'm kind of in charge of things and it's daunting so I have a project that I'm working on and they want to use WooCommerce how would setting up firewalls and managing things like that work when they potentially will have customers who need an account and and how do you prevent things like that from that's happening? hence the problem um sorry my ear fell off dangerous oh. all right um so if you, if you have WooCommerce, chances are you're not going to be able to block any any of the the, the comments and, and things like that because I would assume, I mean, I guess you could. Um, I'm not, I don't know if I could answer that question like on on the because I'd, I'd have to look at the site and there's not a lot because you have to keep things open, you know, for for transactions. But I mean, you're. You're going to have, you know, the normal ports blocked, and as long as you have, I mean, is it, you can get real picky, and are, are all the customers in the United States, you know, you can, you can put a JavaScript challenge on anything that's outside of, I mean, but that, 
it's it's dangerous. That's where, to me, just my experience is mostly uh, marketing sites. You know, where where I don't use WordPress as a as a blogging tool with that, um, and I don't do a lot of e-commerce. So I'm sure. I'm sure there's someone here that specializes in Woo, though. Um, I mean, there's Bob. Uh, what's I? I'm looking at Bob Dunn. I mean, he. I'm sure he could answer that question. Um, I'm just. I don't feel qualified because I just don't do a lot of um, a lot of Woo. So. I have a second question. Can't. I'm just kidding. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> what is a DNS? So um, <laughs> DNS is. Uh, domain name system, um, and basically it's, I'm going to date myself here, but you know what a phone book is? Yes. It's basically a phone book, but backwards. So it, anytime you go to, if you try to go to Fox News or CNN or wherever, uh, anytime you type in CNN.com and hit enter, your computer goes and talks to a domain name server, um, and it says, hey, I'm trying to get to CNN.com what uh, what server is that on? And it gives you the IP address because we're not, we can't remember IP addresses. It's a lot easier to type in CNN as opposed to 192.168.37, you know, like, so, so it's just a way to translate human uh, words, or I guess vice versa, IP addresses to words, you know, so it's just, it's just a mapping, mapping system. Thank you. So. That was a good question. It really was, because I didn't know what that meant for a long time. Any other questions? I think we're good. Good. Okay. All, All right. right. Thank well, you thank much. you very much, everybody.